Hi, this is Jennifer Donna with Young Female Entrepreneurs, and you're watching the Young Female Entrepreneurs live stream that happens every Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern here at ovali.tv slash live. And so if you're watching this at a later date, there's perks of showing up live. We've got a chat going on, um, so you're able to meet other entrepreneurial women in their 20s and 30s and also ask our guests questions. So tonight, um, so we started a little late this evening, uh, and I apologize for that. I appreciate you guys coming up on time, and I always like to start on time, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, um, we're waiting on our guest, and I'm really excited to get her on. Hopefully, she'll show up in the next couple minutes. Her name is Lauren Berger. She's the intern queen of internqueen.com. Um, she's actually just authored a new book, which we'll hopefully be able to talk to her a little bit about. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about what's going on at youngfemaleentrepreneurs.com. We've got a couple things going on. The first one is the book chat or the um, book club. And that's, you can find out at books.yfe.me. We're reading Craving Success by Melody Berenger, who is the founder and owner of The Crave Company, which is in over 30 cities around the world. Um, she's in Amsterdam, some cities in, uh, we've got the book club going on, and that's happening in a private Facebook group, and anyone can join at any time. There's a lot of fun discussion questions happening because our moderators, Jessica Newell and Morgan Hatton, they're two young female entrepreneurs, and they've been coming up with some awesome questions that go around the book. So if you have the book and you're reading the book, fantastic. If you don't, definitely jump in and start sharing with people, um, giving resources, tips, figuring out um, how we can all grow our businesses together. Uh, another cool thing that we're doing is uh, Twitter chats. We just had one on Monday. We're going to have another one, not this Monday, but the next Monday at 11 p.m. Pacific to Eastern and each week, um, we do, for each chat, we do some kind of fun theme. Um, last week's was on negotiate, negotiations, and you can find out more about the following chat um, by going to bit.ly, uh, B-I-T dot L-Y slash chat Y-F-E, and, or youngfemaleentrepreneurs.com, and you can click on Y-F-E chat. So there's a lot of fun stuff that's coming along with that. So you can meet other entrepreneurial women in their 20s and 30s that way. And then finally, uh, we've got, and I have images for all of these, by the way. I should have been queuing you. <laughs> <laughs> it's been kind of a, a hectic <laughs> night. Um, so the YFE book club, show, show me a couple images of those. Uh, there we go. Yeah, so then now we're talking about this awesome upcoming event. And I'm going to welcome in, it's YFE's first ambassador. Um, you can show the next images are for YFE LA. Yes. So YFE ambassador Erin of Well in LA, she's got an upcoming event happening in Los Angeles. It's actually one week from this evening. So Erin, uh, why don't I go ahead and welcome you into the show. Thank you so much for coming tonight, Erin. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Yay. All right. So tell us um, now, young female, where's the camera? <laughs> There's too many. Okay. So Young Female Entrepreneurs uh, interviewed Erin a while back on um, who it is that you are, what your business is all about. We profiled you. Now uh, now you're actually going to be representing Young Female Entrepreneurs in Los Angeles, hosting this party. So why don't you remind everyone, if they didn't watch the live stream with you on it, who you are and what your business is all about? Hi, I'm Erin from Well in LA, as Jen said. And I met Jen on Twitter, of all places. And uh, my business is more or less working with other women who are in kind of lifestyle um, professions to launch their businesses and um, helping things from like overcome fears to how do I schedule Twitter and manage social media. So kind of filling in all the gaps and questions in between. Um, and here in LA, I'm so excited for this event because we have two other really great young female entrepreneurs who are the co-hostesses, and they are Nyla Blades and Donna Cueza, who both have their own indiv um, their own businesses each, so they're both solopreneurs. Um, Nyla is an awesome life coach slash just get your crap in order. She's great at that, and she's also been on YFE, and um, Donna is kind of, she's one of my friends here. She's really dear to me. She's like a social media marketing maven. She has, has her master's in online marketing, which is like a brand new degree. <laughs> and um, they are co-launching a business together called The Launch Sequence. And so they're going to be talking to us about their solo careers, about co-launching and um, business and friendship and how do you make it all work. So I'm so excited 
to have those two as our hostesses. And then we have the beautiful, gorgeous Christina Daly, who is going to be photographing the entire event. And just yesterday, um, Kate Bosworth's jewelry line, Jewel Mint, contacted us and is giving a gift to everyone attending. So now we have jewelry to bribe you. <laughs> How fun. Okay, yeah. so um, when is it again? It's on, it's next it, Thursday. It, it, yeah, the important details. It is Thursday, uh, May 17th from 7 to 9 at Rush Street in Culver City. And the web URL for it is yfe-la-may2012.eventbrite.com. And um, I'm sure we've been putting it up on Twitter, and um, you can find it online pretty easily. We've got 15 people signed up so far, um, so I'm really excited. <laughs> Yeah, it's I okay. So young female entrepreneurs, uh, I put them the first place that I put YFE was in a boardroom. So we had um, ten or so young women that sat around a table and a very structured type of an experience where we sat down um, and we went around the table and talked about what it was that we needed in our businesses, what was happening, and it was all women in our twenties and thirties that had actual businesses happening, and it was super fun just because you got to talk about um, you know. I was pregnant at the time, there was women that were engaged, getting married, and it was just a really neat environment to be around people that were just like you, doing things that you were doing. And so I've always wanted to get the in-person meetings going again, because I took YFE online last year. And so I'm really thankful for Aaron because Aaron actually, I don't know which mic to be in. <laughs> Okay, so Erin uh, came to me and said, I want to get uh, the, I want to meet other young women in the LA area. Um, let's do it. And she really did just do it. So I think that speaks highly of your character. And also, I mean, if you follow well in LA, uh, you know that she's going to be just a joy to me and a really fun person to be around at the party. So hopefully, all of you that are in the Los Angeles area can show up and meet Erin and all of the other lovely women that are there, especially Nyla. Oh my goodness. Nyla is amazing. Wifey yeah. profiled Nyla as well. Um, and Donna, I actually got to meet a little bit at the wifey chat on uh, Monday and she's super fun too. Yeah. It's, it's going to be high energy, lots of smiles, probably lots of laughing. So <laughs> yeah. we're, we're excited. And, um, I couldn't ask for a better group of women to help get this going. And we even have somebody who's brand new to town who's found us, and I am so excited that we have this group here in L.A. that she can meet so many women right off the bat because it was really hard moving from the East Coast to the West Coast and finding girlfriends. Yeah, definitely. Um, so <laughs> uh, just so everyone that's in the chat knows, um, and hopefully I can get this tweeted out, Lauren did just show up on Skype, so she's going to get on. Um, I'll get her on in just a second for everyone. Um, but really fast, Erin, before we let you go, why don't you tell us um, a little bit more about the event space and what's going to be happening? Like, what, what will it feel like when you get there? So uh, Rush Street is a really cool kind of urban bar. Um, we're going to be in the second floor. And we have a, our own space reserved, so we've got an indoor-outdoor space that we're going to be using. Uh, we're going to be providing food. That's what your ticket costs cover. And then um, the thing that's so important to Donna and Nyla and I is that any leftover funds, and Jen, of course, um, is all of our leftover profits from ticket sales are going to the Step Up Women's Network in L.A., which helps young teens find role models and um, a, a guided path towards success in their life. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, so um, if you're watching this video, go to youngfemaleentrepreneurs.com to find out more information about uh, how to register, how to meet Erin online before you show up, and if you have any other questions. But meeting other young women in person is, there's just something really fun about it. Uh, right. So hopefully all of you can come. And Erin, thank you so much for being on the show tonight and telling all of us about the Los oh. Angeles oh. meetup. Thank you. All right, so... YoungFemaleEntrepreneurs.com is going to be presenting um, Lauren in just a minute. So I'm going to take a, a quick break and get her on to Skype. Um, so to All right. So I'm back. Thank you guys so much for being uh, patient and just waiting, chatting with each other. So thankful that you showed up to watch uh, Young Female Entrepreneurs, the live stream that happens every Thursday night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern. And next week's live stream is going to be super fun. Fun. So if you're not in LA and you're not going to that in-person meetup that Aaron was just talking about, 
would love to have you join us for the live stream here at, again, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern. Uh, we've got a lawyer on who's going to be giving us the ins and outs of what it means to get married <laughs> and own a business. Because I think there's a lot of things that are, that miss, that the young female entrepreneur misses when you go and enter into that relationship. And it differs state by state on what that type of relationship looks like, right? So what also happens, you know, maybe later on if your partner decides to join your business. I mean, there's just a lot of little messiness that happens within that whole uh, period of time that having that expert opinion on it well, ahead of time would be fantastic. So tune in next Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern. Uh, tune in live so you can ask her questions yourself and we can highlight your business. And one other really cool thing before uh, Lauren comes on is that if you're on Tout, it's T-O-U-T dot com. I can show it here in the background. Um, so it's this quick 15 second blips that Ashley Bodai of the <laughs> Business Beware Show dot com, her and her family have the cutest little show. Um, not little, it's actually a pretty big show. Uh, but she recommended Tout to me and I've been using it for Ovali, which is my company. We're web hosting and cloud services. And uh, so Tout, if you go into Tout and do a 15 second update and use the hashtag YFETV, I'd love to show you and your business next Thursday. Um, you can also record a question for the lawyer at that time or even just show us like some kind of cool thing that just happened within your business that you want everyone to know about. So without further ado, I want to introduce you to Lauren. I'm going to read a quick bio just so you get a, the gist of who she is. Um, she is actually of internqueen.com. Uh, she's known as the Intern Queen, and she provides advice on careers and internships for high school and college students. After completing 15 internships during the four years of college, Berger launched internqueen.com, a free internship destination for college students to apply for internships and read advice on how to make the most of their opportunities. Berger's break the rules approach has earned her international recognition. So she's also the author of All Work, No Pay. So I'm really excited to welcome Lauren. And Lauren, thank you so much for joining Young Female Entrepreneurs Live. Thank you very much. So if you, I'm um, just, <laughs> uh, if you're watching live, I apologize, Lauren's uh, video is not working this evening, but it's okay. We're, we've got her on here on uh, audio and actually... Here we go. Yep, there she is again. There okay, so we have her on audio, so I apologize. I apologize. Yeah, we'll see her on video hopefully soon, but until then, let's go ahead and ask her some of our questions. Now I have all of you on, um, on the chat that's up, so you're welcome to ask questions as far as uh, hiring interns, creating programs, and making sure that they're mutually beneficial. But before we get going with your questions, I wanted to find out a little bit more about Lauren. So Lauren, why don't you do a better introduction than the one I gave you? <laughs> Sure. Well, thank you so much for having me. This is so cool. I'm so um, empowered by working with and chatting with other young female entrepreneurs. So I just applaud you for doing the show in the first place. But I am known as the Intern Queen. I run internqueen.com, which is a free website where students can go on, they can apply for internships, and then they can... Um, read their blogs and really learn how to make the most of not only internships but every opportunity that comes their way in college and I'm a um, very popular national speaker I tour the country and go to colleges speaking to students about the importance of internships and my my heart is really in the branding of all this I'm really into uh, looking at new opportunities and always thinking okay how can we take the intern queen brand to the uh, next level Fantastic. So why did you start the internqueen.com? What was that process like? When I was in college, I had 15 internships, which is a little crazy. But even <laughs> after my first internship, I remember going to the bookstore and I would look for an internship book. I would look for people to talk to about the subject of interning. And I really fell short. There was nothing that I could find. There were really big websites like Monster or Career Builder, but there was nobody that I could go to that could really hold my hand and walk me through the process. And that's where I saw a void or a gap in the marketplace and I really thought wow after my 15 internship experiences I can really help students uh, to to get it on the right path when it comes to internships and I can help point them in the right direction and provide advice on not only how to find internships but how to make the most of them fantastic now Aaron or uh, 
I'm still talking to Erin. We had Erin of Well in LA earlier on the show, and she talked about our um, in-person meetups. Uh, so you can find out more about that on the recorded version if you're just starting to tune in now. But Lauren, why don't you tell us more about what an intern exactly is? Because you're speaking to a group of women who own their own businesses. They're young. They've done internships themselves, and some of them might have kind of, um, should I say, a bitter taste in their mouths <laughs> from their internships. At least maybe that's just my experience. So what exactly, as you see it, is an internship? I mean, an internship is a great way for you to go into a company that you might be interested in working at in the future and see if it's for you. And along with that, it's a resume builder. There's tons of networking opportunities. And you're supposed to get you know, a very supervised learning experience that's going to help you ultimately decide if it's a career path that you want to pursue after graduation or not. So how so can we use interns within our business? What type of roles would you recommend giving someone um, as far as making sure that they get the experience out of the program at the end of it? I think offering internship programs is a great thing for young entrepreneurs. I think they have to, uh, I think the one thing we all have to be very aware of is having too many interns. I see a lot of startup companies that have one employee and 20 interns. Oh That's a big red flag to me. So it's really important to know that you do have to provide these students with a great learning experience. And as young female entrepreneurs, we're really busy already. So just know that taking an intern on does mean that you need to devote a certain amount of time to that person to make sure that they get the educational experience they need to get from the opportunity. So my my biggest piece of advice is make sure that you have the time to devote to an intern. Don't just think of an intern as someone that's gonna save you time. Because in the bigger picture, they probably will, they'll be very helpful, but it is a significant commitment and time effort in return. And once you bring interns on, if it's not working out, you can't just say, okay, bye. You have a career center involved and you have parents involved. So you have to be really careful and make sure that you're organizationally speaking, you're ready to bring interns on. Right, so as far as uh, Amanda, Amanda Genther, who's on the live chat, as far as delegating different items goes, she's wondering uh, specifically what type of task can we delegate to these interns without making it be kind of like a free labor type of a cheap labor thing. A good rule of thumb is an intern should not be doing anything that directly generates revenue. So anything that has to do with sales calls, an intern should not be involved with. They could listen in on a sales call and hear how you do it for their own learning benefit, but they should not be doing anything directly related to the money. So always think, okay, what's something that indirectly is, you know, helps the business, but doesn't, again, directly generate money. So having interns run your social media campaigns is very popular. Having interns do that research, you know, everyone makes those to-do lists of the things that they wish they had time to do. An intern is a great person to get started on those tasks. So again, a lot of research, um, assessing other companies, competitor companies, and what they're doing, what their strong points are, um, PR, marketing, again, social media. These are all things that uh, an intern can definitely help with. Very nice. Now, as far as looking for finding an intern that fits within your company culture and make sure that you get just as much out of the experience as they do, where do you suggest that we as young female entrepreneurs look? Internqueen.com is a really cool site. I <laughs> But, um, you know, there's my site, but there's also, um, you know, calling some of the local schools is not a bad idea. Um, you know, I think that the main, the main thing is really focusing on that interview. And in that interview, really asking the right questions. One question I always ask interns is, can you describe what the word commitment means to you? And can you describe a time when you were in, you know, a crisis-like situation or, or a situation that was difficult for you and because of your sense of commitment you really followed it through to the end um a big thing with it you know are you going to find the perfect intern for your company who has the same desires strengths likes yeah. i mean a lot of these college students they have no idea what they want to do they, they have no clue so they're coming to you to figure that out so a lot of times you're not going to get the students that are your dream candidates you want to make sure that you get a candidate that's 
willing to do whatever they need to do to get the job done, that's organized, that's gonna ask questions, that's gonna have a positive attitude. And someone who really has taken the time to research the company ahead of time and has done their homework. If you feel like an intern is being kind of lazy or a little sloppy in their answers in the interview, it's not a good sign. Um, if you have to interrupt the candidate during the interview because they keep going on and on and on, this is not a good sign. You always want to be thinking, am I going to be able to work with this person on a daily or weekly basis? Very nice. I mean, those are all great points, but as I mean, specifically in your own business, let's talk about internqueen.com a little bit. How do you utilize, because I talked to, I think, a couple interns of yours, and they were fantastic. They emailed me back right yeah. away. They made sure that they included all of the information I was asking for. How, how do you use interns in your own business? Well, okay, so I'll answer that in two parts. First of all, when, when I'm hiring for interns, I definitely look for passion. I definitely look for people that know my brand. If someone brings up something that I just put on my website that day, I always look for that, and that's very impressive. I always ask people what part of my business they're the most interested in. This also tells me if they've done their homework. So I look for students that are passionate, but also take themselves seriously. For me to have a super fan working for me doesn't make a lot of sense. So it's really important that it's a balance between someone who's passionate about the company and who's done their homework, and also someone who brings a lot to the table in terms of uh, previous experience and organization. Now, with internqueen.com, I usually bring on four interns each semester. Now, keep in mind this is an unpaid internship. So each of these students is only interning 12 to 15 hours per week. I cap it at 15 hours because it is an unpaid internship, and I want these students to be able to go to their jobs, um, go to school, do whatever they need to do to make ends meet. And I, I consider myself reliable or responsible for giving them a very beneficial experience that's going to stick with them for the rest of their lives. So um, at my company, it's a virtual, it's a virtual internship. I work from a home office. I'm on the road all the time. It doesn't make sense for me to have, you know, an office in Los Angeles. So my interns can literally be anywhere in the country. I, of course, make the schedules in terms of Pacific Standard Time, but I have them call in every morning at the beginning of their shift. We do a conference call. We go over social media stats. We go. I have them look up um, press hits for the company and keep track of you know any time we're mentioned in the press. Um, we'll go over just anything that's happened that day, any interesting conversations about interns that they've seen. I have them sort of monitoring the social networks for any conversation about uh, interns, internships, uh, people seeking their first jobs. And then it's a variety of tasks. They do everything from, I, you know, I have them pitch a lot of college media. So they'll pitch school newspapers to cover uh, my brand, my website, my book. They'll pitch um, campus newspapers, campus blogs. They'll do a lot of research. I'm a big to-do list person. I always have lists of things that I'd like to do if there were more time. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I do have them do scheduling. When I had my first job out of college, one of the things that I was terrible at was scheduling because I was never trained on how to be detail-oriented. So I make sure that all of my interns are extremely detail-oriented. I teach them to be intense follow-up machines. Um, I find that interns often don't know how to follow through when they first start at your company. So it's really important to teach them how you can't let the ball drop on things. And if people don't get back to them, that means you follow up again and you follow up again. So teaching them how to be uh, detail oriented and how to follow up properly has been um, a big uh, learning curve. So there's been a few questions in the chat room, and I want everyone to know that if you are on live, I want to get to as many questions as I possibly can, so keep them coming, but I've got a couple queued up here. Now, the first one is from Erin of Well in LA. She's asking that she, um, well, she's had a few young women contact her for shadowing experience. Do you think that this is a good place to start for uh, as far as feeling the water with interns? My question would be, are those high school students? Because a lot of high school students will approach you about job shadowing and I think that's okay but that's not that's something that they're going to get a lot out of and you want to make sure you're not looking at that as an internship per se so I, I would say that if a student wants to job shadow you great I would assume they're in high school I'm not sure 
Um, and then, you know, over the summer, I would maybe designate a day and maybe have one or two students come and do it at the same time, just because that is going to be, uh, you know, it is going to take up a lot of your time, probably just instructing them, showing them around. But I think I think that's a great thing to do and definitely a way to um, introduce yourself to a potential intern. So now as far as job shadowing versus internships go, what is the difference there? Usually when someone wants to job shadow you, they want to come in for either one day or maybe five days and for one week only, and they want to watch you and they want to observe and take notes on what you do and how you do it, and they want to ask you questions. An internship program is usually over the course of a semester. Awesome. So now Erin also asked another question as far as paid and unpaid internships go. Uh -huh. Where do you create the threshold? Yep, great question. Usually paid internships, are in the finance industry, business, um, private sector, high tech, engineering, uh, biochemistry. I mean, these are all fields that traditionally have paid opportunities. Uh, when we look at unpaid internships, we're usually talking about your communications, entertainment, magazine, media, PR kinds of companies, all the, the fun companies that we love. But normally, a paid internship is going to be 40 hours a week. An unpaid internship, like I said, should only be about 12 to 15 hours per week. And that way, if the student needs to um, work a part-time job, they can. Awesome. So the interns that are interning for you are super lucky. I love all the advice that you're giving. Thank you so much. Yes, of Especially with some of the points that you'd like to ins instill kind of in, in these young women that are in college. Now, Amanda Genther, um, who's on the live chat right now, she has someone that's interested in a an internship an internship position that is about to graduate from college. Does it sound like a good idea to hire her? And she's actually the one that seems to be the most enthusiastic about the position. So it sounds like the college just graduating is her issue. Is that a good idea or not? Um, you know, it really depends. A lot of the bigger companies have really formal policies in place that say they cannot take a student if they're not enrolled in school. Yeah. However, uh, we have companies like Tom Shoes that has a program that's catered to recent grads, and it's a great program, has a great reputation. Um, in L.A., uh, Fresh and Easy Supermarkets, they do the same thing. Um, Forever 21 has some of those interns. So I think it's possible. The one thing you want to be clear about is this internship is not a job. And just because you have an internship at my company does not mean it is a job offer. That is um, one of the six legal criteria that define an unpaid internship. So you just want to make sure that the student is on the same page as you. And you also want to keep it very structured. A lot of times what will happen is the student will be out of school, they'll start interning, and then they'll never stop. It's like the uh, HBO show Girls. Oh, I saw that. For uh, <laughs> years after school. So, and you don't want it to turn into that. You need to make sure that you provide structure and that you say, okay, today is your start date. And if it's a, you know, if they want to start for summer, then okay, let them start, you know, anytime between Monday and uh, mid-June and have their last day be um, mid-August. But make sure that you're clear about that so you don't get yourself in a sticky situation. So now, as far as if a college student is an, interested in entrepreneurship, would you recommend that he or she, well, technically on this show, we're talking to she's, uh, would you <laughs> recommend that she go straight into um, starting her own business and just start off with her feet wet? As For example, there's the University of Oregon girls um, who have their uh, wild net butter that's on Shark Tank, and they're still undergrads. Now, uh, would you recommend that these young women start off uh, interning first, or would you recommend that they just start with their business? Um, I think it's a case by case scenario. I mean, I can sort of speak to my own personal experience here. Everyone always says, well, you're an entrepreneur. How come you needed all these internships? If I didn't train under so many successful people, both male and female, I would have no idea how to run my business. My first job out of college was at Creative Artist Agency working under a powerful talent agent named Tracy Brennan, and she knows how to run a business. And does she run her own business? Technically, no. Um, she's an agent at CAA, the largest talent agency in the world. But watching her and her everyday move and how she made every slow day a busy day was something that was priceless to me. And there were so many opportunities like that. There were so many experiences like that at previous internships that I couldn't imagine my life as an entrepreneur without all of this real world experience. 
So now Amanda's asking another question that um, is a good one as far as setting up and hiring an intern. Is it normal to, ha to put in place a specific contract that says uh, I'm gonna, you're going to be an intern from this state to this state? And is it also normal for them to sign a contract that states whether or not it's a full-time position? Um, it really, again, it depends. In most situations, situations, you normally don't need to sign a contract. What you could put together is just a little internship agreement. I think the word contract could scare students away a little bit. Um, you know, it isn't a freelance contractor. I think sometimes as business owners, we're so used to doing contracts for everybody, especially at the right. beginning. With an, intern, with an internship, I would put together a sheet that says internship agreement, and I would write, you know, start date, end date, tasks, tasks and responsibilities, hours. Um, I would go over the protocol for, you know, if they, if they are feeling sick and not coming in one day, if they have family plans or something, you know, what is the protocol for calling in sick or vacation days they might need to take. Um, but yeah, I think you can make them sign that. I think that's a great way to have them take themselves seriously. Um, some companies will also have interns sign a confidentiality agreement. Usually that's not necessary, but if you know you have something really big that's brewing and, and you know you want to get that signed, that's just another form of caution. That's fine as well. But um, I think the important thing to do is ahead of time, before those interns have their first day, to get with your staff if you have a small staff or, or just you know sit down by yourself and just outline the types of tasks that you want to give the interns and how you want this to work. If you're a one-woman show, I don't know that you want to have an intern on every day of the week because I don't know if your schedule allows time to delegate tasks to an intern. Remember, an intern is going to do a task, and then they're going to finish, and then they're going to ask you what they should do next. <laughs> so if you don't have the time to do that or someone else on your team that can kind of monitor the situation, it can get a little tricky. What I like to do is I like to establish projects that my interns are working on on an ongoing basis. So there's certain projects that are, I don't want to call them busy work, but let's say research projects. Maybe I have a list of 100 brands, and I'm looking for digital strategist contacts at each one of these brands. This is kind of an ongoing project that the interns can work on when they have downtime. I am not going to tell an intern that they need to sit there all day and fill out 100 contacts from a company. No one wants to do that. That's super boring. But it is a good kind of time filler and something that they need to learn how to do anyways. Uh, you know, proper research is so important and knowing how to find things quickly. Um, so I think it's kind of a balance of giving people you know, projects that are kind of ongoing that they can work on in downtime and then actual projects that you want them to work on like that day and that week. Very nice. Now, Lauren, when did you graduate college yourself? In 2006. And when did you start your business? I started it. Well, I came up with the idea in 2006 and then I started doing it full time in 2008. And then your book came out in? Just came out in January. All work, no pay. Yep. So, a woman that's just starting off right now, interested in starting her own business and maybe has an idea, what recommendations would you give her as far as getting the research done on that business? Sure. Well, I think a couple things. First of all, I don't know how young this person is, but if you're in college, I definitely encourage you to start your business. I wish someone would have come up to me in college and said, you can run a business and you can start it today. It sounds simple, but no one ever said that to me. And I don't know that I knew it was a possibility. My parents are, you know, my mom's a teacher, my dad's a dentist. I didn't know that I could start my own business. And I think had I known that, things may have changed and they may have been a little bit easier starting out because I would have gotten a lot of the, the um, you know, first steps done while I was still in school and didn't have the real world responsibilities. But um, anyhow, I think um, in terms of research, for anybody that's starting a business, you want to evaluate the space. And I mean, if you're the intern queen, then you're going to become best friends with every competitor out there. And you're going to know their first and last name. You're going to know everything about their business. You're going to try to set a time to talk to them. There's power in collaboration. Keep your enemies close. Um, <laughs> you want to make sure that you, that you know the lay of the land. So I think that's one of the first steps. The second step is definitely registering that web domain and registering every web domain like it. And it's usually not a lot of money but it's definitely something that's going to save you a lot of time and energy in the long run. Um, and I think that, um, 
just looking at businesses that are similar to yours and how they got started because so many businesses start in so many unique ways and it's really interesting to see the different twists and turns that other entrepreneurs have taken or experienced. Very nice. So I want to end in just one other question as far as in your personal business goes. Like you were saying you had a book that came out in uh, January. So it was very recent. You just started your business really four years ago or so. You've had the idea for some time. How were you able to get a book out and have, I mean, you've had crazy publicity. (laughs) How did you pull all of this off? I don't stop and I don't let anybody else stop me. That's what it sounds like. (laughs) Yeah, and that's really what has separated me. I mean, I will contact someone 10 times before they get back to me. And then they'll say, oh, we're sorry. We didn't get back to you for whatever reason. And it wasn't intentional, but I will literally have to follow up with people sometimes 10 times. And sometimes people don't like that. And people say, I don't want to be followed up with. But all you can do is be polite. You don't want to follow up with people every day. But, you know, once, twice a week, I usually Mondays and Thursdays are usually my follow up days. Um, I I am a big believer in following up when people say no to me. I'm so happy that they gave me a response and that they responded. They get so confused. But it's really about taking what you want to do and running with it and not letting anything get in your way. Something that I notice with interns sometimes is that you know, they'll, we'll get, I'll give them a task or tell them to make a phone call and maybe the phone number will get disconnected or, you know, the call won't go through for any reason. And then they sort of give up and they move on to the next thing. And I think a lot of people do that in general when they're trying to start their own business. And I always go back and say, wait a second, if you dialed the wrong number, why don't you go back to your research table and find the right one and don't stop calling until you get the right person on the phone. So it's really just a matter of, me pinpointing what I want to do and then doing whatever it takes to go achieve that. And it's not easy. It's not easy. And you can't let anything get you down. And, you know, my dad once said that you got to remember the good days because there's going to be bad days. I've had some of the best days uh, in the past two years and I've had some of the worst days, but you keep those best times in mind and you get through the worst days. Lauren, thank you so much for being on the show. You're such an inspiration as far as, you know, hiring interns, understanding what it is, helping these girls get the experience they need to get to face the real world, especially in our current economy (laughs) and the jobs, uh, the job market. Um, So thank you so much for doing that. And so one last time, where can everyone find you online? Uh, internqueen.com and then uh, my book is called All Work No Pay you can find it in Barnes and Noble or get it on Amazon and then I'm at internqueen on Twitter so tweet me awesome well thank you again and thank you everyone that contributed questions Lauren did a fantastic job answering them so make sure that you like her Facebook page Twitter Um, she also has an awesome YouTube video uh, page that I was looking at earlier today so check that out as well Um, Lauren thank you again and I'm sorry about traffic but I so appreciate you getting up on Skype for us thanks everybody All right, so you've been watching youngfemaleentrepreneurs.com, the live stream that happens every Thursday night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern. Next Thursday, like I was saying, we've got a lawyer on that's going to be giving you advice as far as getting married, building a business, and all the legalities that happen in between. Um, Get on tout.com and record a 15-second video about your business, about a cool accomplishment, about a question that you want to ask the lawyer, um, and use the hashtag YFETV. Hopefully you'll show up at the LA in-person meeting next Thursday. If not, I hope to catch you on a YFE chat on Twitter. Thank you so much for showing up tonight, you guys. I really appreciate it. Have a great week.